Hello and welcome to the seventh week of season 23, Season of the Wish, starting on January 9th, 2024. So for week seven, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in Rio Silvia and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind World features Taken Enemies and the Plague Einamina. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Keep of Owned Edges, which can be located over in the Harbinger Seclude on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is in the deep. The Trove Guardian is located in the Hellmouth, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Fallen Council in Archer's Line. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Zydron, Servitude, Tanix, Isolation, and Skolas, Pride. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Praxis the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary Rounds are Cabal, Taken, and for the final round, Krota. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 2's Rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armor Set, and the Perfectus Armor Set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Scathe Lock, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun Extraordinary Rendition, the Void Aggressive Burst Sidearm Brass Attacks, the Void Precision Frame Linear Fusion Rifle Threaded Needle, the Solar High Impact Frame Rocket Launcher Go Duello, the Void Lightweight Frame Bow Imperial Needle, the Solar Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle Far Future, the Arc Adaptive Frame Sword Honor's Edge, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Distant Termulus, the Arc Adaptive Frame Grenade Launcher Interference 6, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle Shepherd's Watch, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Hand Cannon Annual Skate. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Communion, where the modifier is Empath, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Altar of Reflections Choice, and Altar of Reflections Pact. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is First Contact, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Void Threat, Scorched Earth, Overcharged Weapons, Stasis and Solar Surges, Overcharged Shotguns and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty Only. The Partition mission will be Hard Reset, Contest Mode Enabled with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Arc Threat, Martyr and Empath Modifiers, Void and Strand Shields with Stasis and Solar Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Liming Harbour. In addition, the weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Enter the Abyss, called Conservation of Energy. Guardians must alternate between depositing the Chalice of Light in a Podium and enlightening a Lamp. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept Weapon. The Adept Weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Kingsfall Raid Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Daughters of Oryx, called Under Construction. Players cannot stand on the same plate twice in a single phase. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the third encounter, The Upender, called Defenses Down. This is where each player cannot kill more than one token knight in total. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Atheon, called Ensembler's Refrain. Each player teleported can only destroy one oracle in each spawn set. The Deepstone Crypt Challenge this week is the first encounter, Crypt Security, called Red Rover. This is where all Guardians must be an operator and shoot the two panels on the lower levels. The God of Salvation Challenge this week is the first encounter, Embrace, called To The Top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclopses that spawn near the Consecrated Mine. And the last Wish Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Vault, called Keep out. Guardians must ensure that no Might of Riven Knights make it to the center chamber during the Vault fight. Your pinnacle raid will be the Root of Nightmares over on Neptune, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Cataclysm, called Illuminated Torment. This is where every Tormentor must be killed by a player with a Field of Light buff. The second encounter, Scission, called Crossfire. No one can shoot the launch crystals on the side they're currently standing on. The third encounter, Macrocosm, called Cosmic Equilibrium. Players must swap all of the dark planets to the left side of the room and all of the light worlds to the right. And the fourth encounter, Nazarek, called All Hands. Each player in your fire team must trigger one node on each side before the damage phase begins. Also, with the Root of Nightmares being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic shotgun, Conditional Finality. 
And for the first time, the Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Ghost of the Deep over in the Helm. And our exotic mission rotator will be Operation Seraph Shield, with the Revision Zero Exotic Pulse Rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Stasis Aggressive Frame Linear Fusion Rifle Fire and Forget, the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow Tripwire Canary, the Stasis Aggressive Burst Pulse Rifle Disparity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle Path of Least Resistance, the Solar Aggressive Glaive Judgment of Kelgoroth, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Retrofit Escapade, the Void Precision Frame Hand Cannon iColos HC, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun iColos SG, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper iColos SR, and the Arc Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun iColos SMG, with the Warmind's Avatar Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Wish Seeker 7, complete week 7 of Wishing All the Best, for Challenge XP Plus. Swift Dispersal, rapidly defeat 50 combatants in Riven's Lair or the Coil. Gain additional progress from final blows within the coil. Additionally, collect wishing glass shards in the coil. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Dragon's Defender 5. Defeat 125 targets with trace rifles or linear fusion rifles. Gain additional progress from Guardian Final Blows and Final Blows within Riven's Lair or the Coil. 4. Challenge XP Plus. On a whim, obtain the Chivalric Fire Sword. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Expedited Violence. Rapidly defeat 25 targets in Crucible, Gambit, or Vanguard. Bonus progress is granted for Guardian Final Blows. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Weight of Dreams. Get 150 Final Blows with weapons using heavy ammo in ritual activities. And bonus progress for Rocket Launcher Final Blows or by defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Flourish of Power. Defeat 25 Guardians in the Mayhem playlist with super abilities. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Darkest Nightfall. Complete any Nightfall Strike on Hero difficulty or higher. Bonus progress is granted for completing Nightfalls above Hero difficulty. 4. Challenge XP++, plus plus, Bright Dust and a Nightfall Weapon. And Midrange Calibration. Calibrate Midrange Weapons, Hand Cannons, Glaives, Auto Rifles, Fusion Rifles and Machine Guns. Bonus progress is granted for defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP++ plus plus, and Bright Dust. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armour you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. This season we'll see the introduction of gunsmith engrams, as well as the selection of foundry weapons for completing legend and master loss sectors while solo with Legend being a 70% chance to Master being 100%, assuming the Guardian is thorough enough to leave no champion standing. Thorough completions on Master difficulty will also have the advantage of weapons dropping an additional perk in either the 3rd or 4th column. The weapons available from the Lost Sectors are grouped into 4 weapons per day over 4 days, and after the 4th day the cycle repeats back to the first set. The following weapons will be available from the Lost Sectors during the Season of the Wish. Day 1, the Strand High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Nox Perennial 5. The Strand Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Old Sterling, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Grenade Launcher Marcillion C, and the Stasis Amalon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Senua SI6. Day 2, the Stasis High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Cyhomatic 5, the Strand Precision Frame Scout Rifle Glissando 47, the Strand Vice Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Urakanji, and the Arc Adaptive Frame Sword Nazaradin. Day 3, the Solar Lightweight Frame Sidearm Heliocentric QSC, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Sniper Rifle Last Foray, the Arc Aggressive Frame Shotgun Hand in Hand, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Battle Scar. Day 4, the Nadir Void Adaptive Frame Sword Geodetic HSM, the Arc Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon Combined Action, the Void Wave Frame Grenade Launcher Harsh Language, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Coronatcha 22. This week's rotation will start on Weapon Set 3 on Tuesday's Reset. Tuesday, January 9th will be Skydock 4 on the EDC for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Pestilence Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, January 10th will be the Quarry on the EDC for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Thursday, January 11th will be Affilion's Rest on the Dreaming City for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Epitaph Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, January 12th will be the Bay of Drowned Wishes on the Dreaming City for Exotic Helmets, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, 
Void Shields, the Raider Shield modifier, Overcharged Snipers with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, January 13th will be Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Epitaph Modifier, Overcharged Swords with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Sunday, January 14th will be Perdition on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharged Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, January 15th will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Chess, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our seventh featured Nightfall of the Season will see us face off against Ulnath Light Cleanser in the Psyops Battlegrounds Cosmodrome, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. This Nightfall will have Barrier, Unstoppable and Hive Guardian Champions, with Void, Solar and Arc Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available. Enemies have extra shields. Champions foe. You will face barrier, unstoppable and lucent champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. Overcharged weapons. Weapons overcharged from the seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Void threat. 25% increase for incoming void damage. Stasis and solar surges. 25% bonus to outgoing stasis and solar damage. Overcharged Shotguns, 25% bonus damage with shotguns. Martyr, Exploder units have more health. Galvanized, Combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. No Matchmaking, Equipment Locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1820 includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. Champions Mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. Togetherness, both health regen is reduced. If near another player, health regen is increased. Grand Master difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized, Togetherness and Martyr. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. Contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. Fire pit, when defeated, Acolytes spawn fireballs that cause damage over time. And Chafe, the radar is disabled. To combat champions, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods. This season's artifact is the Queen's Force Sensor. The anti-champion mods available this week are Anti-Barrier Sidearm, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, and Unstoppable Bow. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Anti-Barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wish Ender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle Arbalist, the Kinetic Pulse Rifle Revision Zero, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon Ariana's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword The Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, the Titan Gauntlet Sash and Wake, where Fusion Grenade hits stun unstoppable champions, and the Hunter Gauntlet Sathos's Embrace, which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week will be the Kinetic Heavy Burst Frame Hand Cannon Warden's Law. The Warden's Law has a base impact of 92, a range of 56, and stability of 29. It can roll with Kill Clip, the Rampage, and Zen Moment, with enlightened action, moving target, and snapshot sights. It has the origin trait of stunning recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with a weapon grant a small amount of health. Available in the 6v6 playlist will be Control. Control is a variation of Team Deathmatch, with the added variable of 3 capture points on the map, in which teams will need to work together to capture and hold the point. Guardians conquer capture points by standing on them while no enemies are in capture range. The process takes about 10 seconds and is not affected by the number of Guardians taking part in the capture. 
Each team begins with a capture point under their control, the one that is closest to their starting area. The third capture point will initially be neutral. Depending on the number of capture points held by a team, the points rewarded for killing an opponent varies. The scoring is calculated as follows. Base kill rewards plus one point. Zone advantage when a team holds two capture points, killing an enemy will reward the team with two points. Power play when a team holds all three capture points, killing an enemy will reward them with plus three points. Capture. Conquering a capture point rewards the team that claimed it with plus one point. Capturing a point will reward you and your team a small portion of super energy. If you are on the point while it's captured, you will gain additional energy on top of this small portion. During a control match, there is only one power ammo spawn location. It will spawn in at 45 seconds and then every 120 seconds. Control matches feature an 8 minute time limit and all players will respawn automatically 5 seconds after the death mechanics. The first team to 150 points or the team that has the most points at the end of the time limit is declared the winner. And Mayhem returns in the Party Relentless playlist. Mayhem is where two teams of six players go head-to-head -head in a clash type mode. Abilities and supers charge at an extremely faster rate than usual. Respawns are instant and power ammo spawns are also much faster than usual. With a time limit of 10 minutes, the first team to get 125 eliminations is the winner. Elimination will also be available in the 3v3 playlist. Elimination is a 3v3 game mode that focuses on eliminating the enemy team. Teammates can revive each other, but cannot revive themselves. The first team to eliminate the other team wins the round. If neither team have been eliminated after 2 minutes, then a control point will spawn somewhere on the map. The team that captures the point will win the round. If neither team can capture the point, then whichever guardian is closest to the centre of the point will win the round. Heavy ammo will spawn in the round after a team has won 3 rounds. The first team to win 5 rounds wins the match. Plus, available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be a version of the game mode Checkmate. Whichever game mode is put into the Labs playlist, don't forget that the Checkmate parameters will be in play, with primary weapon damage being tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game. Players also have increased health and passive regeneration of the grenade, melee and class abilities have all been reduced by 50%, and supers by 40. Also, you will not spawn in with special ammo. Instead, you will have to earn it by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally, you will not drop special ammo on death. Delightful! And Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with Trials of Osiris Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader Visor Regalia. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked to a passage card a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials, and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of seven games won and no losses. Five round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in Trials, you do have a chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. Also, adding a little more incentive to play Trials this weekend, there will be bonus Trials ranks available. That is amazing. And that's it for the seventh week of Season of the Wish. Thank you for watching. Allons-y. Guardian down.